Hi, this is just a quick follow-up to my previous teardown video, and guys, check this out. So now after some digging, I had uh, finally uh, restored this uh, pulse generator, and it appeared to be fully functional right now. And uh, right now I'm going to show you some of the, uh, uh, you know, its performance and uh, some of the waveforms coming out of it. But later, uh, after I'm done with that, I will uh, show you what are the parts that um, I fixed. So right now let's uh, set this to channel 1. Uh, channel 1 is already selected. Um, now set mode to uh, continuous uh, output. Uh, so that's a 0. Let's set that to... And the function, let's do a, uh, a square wave. So that's function number two. Um, let's uh, set that. So yeah, so this panel is quite intuitive. I actually don't have any uh, manual to go with it, but uh, you know, after poking around, I can figure out uh, exactly what needs to happen. So that's another design of a, uh, you know, of um, some of the modern uh, instrument, which is uh, unfortunately making it way complex, uh, complicated to operate. And, uh, but anyway, so let's say uh, the trigger format, we, I, I don't think it matters because uh, as, now, uh, wait a minute, now I need to set the output to be on. So on off, and uh, I can set, oh, sorry, it's uh, on, okay. So now if you look at the oscilloscope up here, I have it back there. Um, later on, I'm gonna change that to a, um, to a uh, digital scope so you can see some of the pulses. But right now, this is just, uh, uh, you know the the actual square wave generated right now i think it's at a one kilohertz and um, uh, what what is nice about this waveform generator is that you can continuously adjust the uh, uh, the frequency and the amplitudes so let's do the frequency adjustment here so if i if you just uh, stare at that uh, um, so now I, i'm going to do it uh, by one kilohertz so if i increase it uh, by one kilohertz now two kilohertz three kilohertz so you can see that um, it changes uh, pretty nicely and I can actually uh, make this uh, frequency adjustment down to uh, you know using the cursor so here I'll show you briefly here so right now it's showing one kilohertz and if I do the cursor um, if I uh, so I can say I can you know if I do want to do 11 kilohertz and then the cursor goes back to um, you know, so 9.9, 9 9.6. So you get an idea that this can actually be changed like that. And also we can uh, change the amplitude of the, uh, the output signal. So here I have the, uh, let's see, um, where, where am I? The amplitude uh, should be somewhere here. Uh, I think it's the upper level. Yep. So right now it's set to 500 millivolts. Again, I can uh, increase this. So now it's like it by 10 millivolts. And if you look at it carefully, um, let me just uh, zoom it in. Um, right now that's set to 10. Uh, hang on, let me uh, reduce the uh, time base a little bit so you can see the signal. And uh, right now, let me increase it. Uh, uh, 10 millivolts interval. So right now I'm at uh, 1.5. So again, that's quite nice. You can just uh, you know dial it here and uh, adjust your uh, output signal level. So one thing good about a, uh, a digital scope is that uh, for a single pulse scenario, you probably won't be able to see very clearly on this uh, um, on this uh, uh, analog scope. So uh, for our next uh, uh, little experiment, I'm going to uh, swap out the, uh, the oscilloscope and uh, use uh, my Rigo uh, 1052E uh, to, to do some measurements. So now I have uh, switched to this uh, Rigo digital scope and let's take a look at uh, some of the, uh, the simple uh, functionalities we, we have out of this uh, pulse generator. And uh, so right now, Every time after power on, it's a default to uh, out, output channels off and uh, default to the trigger mode. So right now we want it to uh, set to continuous mode. And we wanted the function to be uh, number two, which is uh, uh, the continuous uh, square wave. And output, we want to turn it on. 
So output on off and use a vernier uh, to turn it on. So now this is a one kilohertz uh, um, a square wave. And you can see that the actual uh, reading here is uh, 978 uh, hertz, which is uh, probably a little bit of off, but uh, um, again, this instrument doesn't have very tight tolerance. And uh, so I think the general uh, specification is that it's plus minus 10% or something like that. So anyway, so the, the, the absolute accuracy is uh, not a uh, primary concern. Um, so now let's take a look at uh, some of the, the uh, adjustments we can do here. So right now we have this uh, uh, square wave showing up. So we can actually change the frequency uh, you know, two ways. One is you can say I enter uh, 2 kilohertz, which is uh, 2 uh, to the 6th. Uh, oh, sorry, to the 3rd, rather. Uh, so let's uh, cancel this. Um, it's a 2 to the 3rd. So that's 2 kilohertz. And uh, or we can use the uh, this uh, uh, vernier here to adjust the, the, the frequency. So let's hit frequency again. So if I put my cursor here, you can adjust uh, at an accuracy of every increment of every 10 hertz. So right now I can adjust, you know, just dial it. And or you can press the cursor here is every 100 hertz. So and so forth. So as you can see, uh, the basic thing is pretty nice. And uh, let's change the um, change the uh, the time base a little bit. And also, as I showed earlier, you can also change the uh, uh, the level. So right now, the upper level is 500 uh, uh, millivolts. We can change this to let's change it up up. So we change it to one volts, let's say. And uh, um, you can change the change the uh, so upper amplitude is a uh, you know like. A, the lower it's still 500, so we can change this as well. So uh, we can we can reduce this, let's say, right now. So we'll make it starting from zero. So now this uh, uh, waveform should be starting at approximately zero. So there's a little bit of uh, offset here, and uh, this is something that later on I can probably uh, uh, you know, like following some of the uh, adjustment procedures to, to offset. But, uh, so this is actually a quite nice uh, scope, uh, not scope, quite nice uh, waveform generator, and uh, it can generate some extreme small pulses. So, uh, for instance, uh, let me, uh, I haven't really uh, played with it much, so let me turn it off and I will uh, set a single pulse mode. Uh, I could have. I could just adjust it here, but uh, um, I just want to be faster here. So again, we want to do a continuous uh, function. This time, we are going to change the single. So it's a zero, single, mo single pulse, and uh, output on. So now, actually, what we have here is you can see this a little pulse. Uh, the reason I changed to this uh, digital scope is because that pulse you won't be able to see on a on the analog scope because it's very narrow. So as you can see here, we have this uh, um, repetition rate. Uh, so the whole frequency is like uh, is one kilohertz again, and uh, and we have this width of the uh, of the pulse is like roughly 10 nanoseconds. So to capture something like this on a traditional um, traditional analog oscilloscope uh, going to be extremely difficult. So that's again, you know, why we need uh, uh, one of the benefits of digital uh, scopes. So anyway, so, and uh, there are again a lot of functionalities I probably haven't uh, touched and I'm going to try to figure out uh, what this thing can do, but uh, you know, as we can see here, it has various trigger modes and uh, you can output multiple pulses and, uh, and so forth. So definitely, uh, I'm pretty excited that uh, uh, this uh, unit, uh, after all, was uh, I was able to fix it. So now let me show you what I have done uh, in order to fix this unit. So now I just uh, turn off the power, and I'm going to remove this front panel to show you what I have done. Actually, the pa panel I haven't uh, uh, glued it back in place yet. So. Basically, there's a connector connecting to this panel. I can uh, um, unconnect it, disconnect it, and uh, 
Originally, there's a wire here that's very short. I kind of extended it. This is just the, uh, the wire for the ground, for the earth ground. So let me uh, zoom it in a little bit, so hopefully you can see uh, more closely. So basically, uh, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, corrosion on this board. And the reason is that they use this type of uh, black material. I don't know what type of thing. It's a kind of little uh, sticky uh, to glue this uh, panel onto the board. And what happened, what is going on is uh, over time, uh, this material absorbs water and water ended up uh, corroding this, uh, the, this circuit board here. So what happened, you know, as you can see, um, there are a couple of places, and this is probably one of the, uh, the places you can see the clearest. Um, there are a couple of places where, uh, if you can focus, yeah, let me see if it focuses. Um, if it doesn't focus, I'm just gonna, yeah, probably this is the closest you can get. Uh, so this area, you can see there's a, a wire that I have to uh, solder it. Uh, patch it up because it's uh, the trace is already broken and then here's another place where the trace is broken and here are a couple of places where the trace is broken so I had to uh, solder it back on so that the keyboard you know can be salvaged and this is actually kind of neat so this keyboard I believe what what uh, the technology behind this is a uh, capacitive sensing um, so as you can see the construction is uh, this uh, there's a surface uh, piece of uh, material that is attached to this uh, circuit board and I believe that um, you know behind these uh, things because you really can't push this down so basically when you touch this, uh, uh, the surface the, uh, the, capaci the capacitance between uh, these two points change would change and uh, through the uh, this capacitance change um, the signal is registered and uh, and you will be able to, uh, you know, like detect that through through the, the the processing unit. So we can take a look at how this uh, how this one works uh, in a bit. So what I did here is uh, I just you know hook up a scope, trying to pro uh, probe one of the random pins uh, because um, you know different pins here probably controls a different segments of this uh, keypad. Anyway, so this particular pin. Um, you know, some of the numeric pad uh, uh, switches are being controlled. So right now, uh, you, you can see there's nothing on the scope, and uh, excuse me for this, uh, you know, the interference, uh, it's probably not hooked up uh, very, uh, you know, not shielded correctly, and uh, so there's a lot of noise being picked up, but uh, you will see the idea. So here is a, when nothing is being pressed. Now if I press three, uh, you will see it, you know, the, the certain oscillation frequency. And if I press different uh, buttons, uh, we have di uh, we may have a slightly different uh, 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 waveforms. So basically, the processor unit on this uh, display board would uh, be able to uh, determine which key was uh, pressed. So anyway, so this is how uh, the keyboard uh, works. And uh, let me uh, further uh, take uh, take out the board. Actually, show you what uh, I did um, on the processor board side. Uh, I just took off the screws. So let me take off the uh, uh, the top cover again, and I'll show you what I did. So um, these three boards originally the processor board uh, is located in this this slot, but it doesn't really matter because these three slots all the uh, um, you know the, the each pins are uh, connection is identical so I at first was uh, trying to figure out whether or not it's a uh, problem with uh, you know some of the, uh, the, the connector connections but uh, it turned out not to be so that's why I moved this out from the uh, uh, from the second one to the third one anyway so if you look at this uh, uh, circuit that I I mean this oscillator circuit so right now, you can see that I changed this uh, 7404 um, because if you remember, this area was very, very dirty. So what I ended up doing is um, uh, took that out and it seems that there's some corrosion and may have contributed to the signal integrity on this board. So that probably explained why uh, this board doesn't post 
uh, because you know some of the timing or uh, the, the pause is not uh, uh, up to specification when it feeds this uh, MCU. But anyway, so in the meantime, I also changed this uh, uh, this uh, oscillator. Uh, originally, the oscillator was a little big. Uh, the, the the big one. This is a half size, and um, um, it seems to be doing okay. So, and as it turned out, that these are the uh, the EEPROMs uh, are indeed uh, you know like or uh, are actually in order in working order, and these two are meant to be uh, uh, you know not populated. So I'm not actually sure what those uh, are, but um, it might be for certain options, uh, who knows. But anyway, so this appeared to be uh, where the problem was uh, when this board didn't post. So now, after I changed that, uh, the board is back to working order. Anyway, so I hope you enjoyed the video and hopefully learned something uh, about how to troubleshoot a, uh, the circuit. And uh, I'm actually very excited because I was able to fix this after all. It looks like a very nice unit with all the uh, options installed. And some of the ones I saw on eBay, you know, only has uh, either one channel or it doesn't have the GPIV option or, you know, it's, uh, uh, it has some other issues. But this one I was able to get it quite cheaply and uh, then after all was able to fix it. So I saved it uh, from going to the dump which, um, you know, it's all the better. And uh, if you have any questions um, or comments, uh, please let me know. And uh, what I'm going to do probably is going to try to locate a, a service manual. I did see there were some service manual for sale on eBay. Um, I might uh, get it or, you know, depends on uh, if, whether or not I can figure out the, how to calibrate this thing. Um, I may do a calibration uh, sometime in the future. And thanks for watching.